Nobody knows the media better than our friend Joe Contra. He's got a fantastic new book out called Progressively Worse, Why Today's Democrats Ain't Your Daddy's Donkeys. Joe Contra, I think what we're seeing today is worse than anything we've ever seen. Am I wrong about that? Disgusting gaslighting, Mark, and, and thanks for having me. I mean, this is Soviet Pyongyang kind of stuff mm-hmm. that we're seeing as far as this media that's gone. They used to be under the guise that they're objective, you know, they're left-leaning, but overall, the Tim Russerts, the Peter Jennings of the world, you, you could accept them because at least they kind of tried to do their job objectively, uh, particularly mm-hmm. Russert, who I had respect for, but, but now... There's no one like that left. It's all about we need to defeat Donald Trump. We need to get Kamala Harris over the finish line, and we can allow her to change every policy position that she has, including taking Trump's (laughs) – I mean, this is unbelievable – the the, uh, tax on tips. Now it's her idea, apparently, or the Time magazine cover where, you know, she looks like a Vita. Uh, It doesn't matter. This is propaganda in a country that's supposed to have a free press. Instead, it's just a full court press on defeating Donald Trump. And we don't have a free press. We have a press that is free to operate, but that doesn't make it a free press in the sense of substance. You know, we have a right to vote, but don't we have a right to vote with information and knowledge? Isn't that the point, Joe? Well, isn't that funny, Mark, that we have a right to vote? Because this candidate in Kamala Harris has not received one vote. Despite Mm -hmm. when she ran for president in 2020, didn't receive one vote because she didn't get to Iowa. And now, as a Democratic nominee, didn't receive one vote. So, yeah, I guess only one side does the whole voting thing. And now you have a major party nominee who, for 24 days, has not taken one question of substance. And the only thing that she's offered up is maybe I'll schedule an interview by the end of the month, which means you will not hear from her until after Labor Day into September, after early voting started. This is John Fetterman 2.0 all over again. You remember he avoided taking any tough questions at all, avoided debating uh, Dr. Oz before that Senate uh, uh, race over in Pennsylvania uh, until a couple of days before the election that he melts down during the debate because obviously he did not have the cognitive ability at that time. Uh, but it, it didn't matter because he got over the finish line. That's all this is. Run out the clock and don't talk to anybody until you absolutely have to. Fortunately, I guess there'll be two debates on ABC and NBC, but Kamala Harris is still avoiding Fox where she'd actually get some real questions. Uh, but again, I think those debates will expose her regardless the same way CNN and that debate expose Joe Biden, because once you take her out of a teleprompter, out of prescriptive remarks, it is an absolute train wreck, as we have seen, because this is just not a very articulate or, quite frankly, a, a very smart person uh, who, who could make an argument. And plus, her, her, <laughs> her policy positions are completely indefensible based on what she has said then about abolishing ICE and ending fracking and sanctuary cities and ending all private health insurance and giving private health insurance to illegals and raising taxes. I I could go down the line to fund the police. Uh, These are indefensible positions and Donald Trump should and will expose that. Mm. You know, I hope you're right because the media are going to work overtime. They're not going to want to happen to her what happened to Joe Biden. There's no question in my mind about that. Number one. Yeah. Number two, the way they asked their questions with Trump, when did you stop beating your wife? And then they asked the other candidate, what's your opinion of that? He needs to Tulsi Gabbard her. Remember how Tulsi Gabbard absolutely eviscerated Kamala Harris? Oh, yeah. In July of 2019, she was the front runner at that time uh, because she basically called Joe Biden a racist in the first primary debate. At the second debate, Tulsi Gabbard made... Let's put it this way. If you remember Mike Tyson uh, versus Michael Spinks, uh, that thing was over 91 seconds and her campaign never recovered. So that's exactly what Donald Trump has to do. And I agree with you. The media is not going to do their job. But at those debates, you have David Muir and you have Lester Holt. And if enough uh, pressure is applied to them the same way it was to Jake Tapper and Dana Bash in that, oh, you're going to be biased. You're not going to ask any tough questions. They may almost do that just to prove that they are actual journalists and they deserve to have the evening newscasts that they have. Uh, And it doesn't even have to be tough questions. Just read back Kamala Harris's words to her and ask her to defend her current positions now, which she hasn't done at all to this point. And again, once she starts talking outside of that teleprompter, it's clean up on all 5, 17, 24, 28, 31, because she does not have the ability to speak extemporaneously. I I would say, though, that we shouldn't, we ought to be a little bit it. careful. We, we ought to be a little bit careful about it because she seems to get prepared 
for for you know it's 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 like a it's like drama school you're prepared for your lines you're prepared for that for that event you're prepared and so forth and they'll have her relatively prepared i do agree with you if it goes on long enough the word salad will pop out and for really two reasons not only is she not smart but she's got to make sure she doesn't tick off her hamas base while at the same time trying to reach out to the middle she's in a bit of a pinch there no Oh, completely. You're right about that. When she says she wants to end fracking, if I'm Donald Trump, I would say, but Kamala, what will that do to the environment? Because you said before that if we continue fracking, continue fossil fuels, then that will destroy the environment along with ending all offshore drilling. So what do you say to all the environmentalists that that you once were in lockstep with? I mean, this is probably a very tough position for you. In other words, throw it all back at her that way. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. She will be prepared with some zingers that the media obviously will run with. But even if you look at polls now, real clear politics average, Donald Trump is still slightly leading as far as you look at the swing states. And those are the only ones that matter. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina. Uh, If he wins four of those seven states, he wins the election. So I I think that, you know, this thing is still 50-50 with the debates probably favoring Donald Trump and conditions on the ground still favoring Donald Trump because people still feel inflation. They still think the world's on fire. They still hate the fact that 12 million people have come through our border unbedded. I think if he really keeps hammering away on her policy positions, on her character, which the people call it flip, this is a character issue uh, that she lies so, so easily. If he keeps pounding away on that, pounding away, I don't see this juggernaut yet. You just pointed it out. She's not 10 points ahead or six points ahead or 17 ahead like Dukakis was early on with George H.W. Bush. Despite all of this, and I'm not trying to be cocky or Pollyanna about this, she still hasn't, she hasn't broken away. It's a great book, folks. Joe Concha is with us. Progressively worse. Why today's Democrats ain't your daddy's donkeys. In fact, Joe Concha, I spent the first two hours of this program going at length into the ties between Harris and Waltz and the most dangerous, extremist, Islamist organizations, front groups for Hamas, uh, Hitlerian imams, and the stories are not from the so-called mainstream media. You have to read them in other places like Breitbart or Blaze or uh, the Free Beacon. It's just contemptible what they're doing here. I mean, it's so dangerous. I read the Free Beacon uh, story just earlier, Mark, and yeah, I mean, at some point you can't ignore this, especially if, and I think you called it one time, and I, I love the quote, I was listening to your radio show, I was just driving home one night, uh, the Paul Revere's on social yes. media, right? Twitter is the great equalizer, right? So if enough people with enough influence start to share these stories, and it's not like, oh, well, it's a right-wing conspiracy, you know, like COVID came from a lab, which actually probably happened. No, mm-hmm. this, this is real stuff. And it what it shows because I could not understand, Mark, for the life of me, why here Kamala Harris had what is basically, I don't know if you golf, I miniature golf with my kid anyway, close mm-hmm. enough, a two-inch putt, right? Which yeah. is when she had to choose a vice presidential candidate to run with her. And Josh Shapiro sitting there at 65% approval in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. where if you listen to Nate Silver, he says the winner of Pennsylvania has a 95% chance of winning the election. And I, I agree with that. Maybe not 95, but you win Pennsylvania, you're probably going to win the election. And she doesn't go with Shapiro, and she goes with tampon Tim Walls instead, mm. right? This guy who let Minneapolis burn to the ground. He's to the left of Bernie Sanders. He's a clown on the campaign trail. He also won't take questions because he's a coward, or at least his handlers are. And you don't go with Shapiro, and we know why that is. Not because mm-hmm. Shapiro wasn't qualified, not a good speaker, all those things, uh, because he's Jewish. And the fact that that's the case shows you why maybe now we're seeing these connections back to these Hamas-related or connected groups. Uh, This is a bigger story than I think people imagine right now, and it's only, I I don't think it's going to go away. At least I hope it isn't going to go away. And you know, what is amazing to me is we rely on media outlets, and I've written about this at some length, others have too, like the New York Times. And I pointed out earlier in the show, Joe, if you had a subscription to the New York Times from 1939 to 1944, you would not have known the massive extermination and genocidal campaign against the European Jews by Hitler. You wouldn't have known about it. 
And it was owned by a Jewish family. So when Kamala Harris, and I'm not comparing her to Hitler, they do that to Trump. But when she says, look at my husband, he's Jewish, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Look at her record. Look what she says. Look who she associates with. And if you expect the New York Times to call out Kamala Harris and these Hamas connections, then you're reading the wrong newspaper. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you think about it, they have not, Mark, endorsed a Republican presidential candidate since 1956. Now, think about that for a moment. That means they said, you know, Hubert Humphrey, that's our guy, <laughs> right? Uh, Jimmy Carter against Reagan, that's our guy. Walter Amazing. Mondale against Reagan, who won one state, won uh, Minnesota, his own state, and Reagan could have won that if he actually campaigned there. Uh, Mondale's our guy. Dukakis is our guy. John Kerry is our guy. I could go down the list. Uh, mm-hmm. But they, they have no track or no pulse on the American people whatsoever. And maybe the reason why, because the New York Times has always had tremendous influence, particularly in Democratic circles, maybe FDR didn't move to go into World War II sooner to stop the Nazis, only until the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, obviously, because maybe he was reading the New York Times and saying, oh, you know, there's nothing really bad going on over in Europe. We shouldn't. And <laughs> we shouldn't. And then try to save these people. So, yeah, you're, you, you've been writing about that for some time. I know that. And, and it's just disgusting, the fact that the New York Times is owned literally by a Jewish family. And uh, they have been running these anti-Semitic uh, tropes for, for decades now. The Washington Post, during the same period, was owned by a Jewish family, did the same damn thing. And so my point to people is this. You've got Harris now who's appointing these anti-Israel Jews around her, like her outreach person to the Jewish community who was an Obama guy who's been all Iran all the time. You look at Blinken. He's no great pro-Israel guy either. Or look at Bernie Sanders. He's an Islamist. He's a Marxist Islamist. They don't represent the Jewish people or the Jewish faith or anything like that. But the Democrats and the media are very, very good at this. And so I guess my point is this. They will do anything to win. Anything to win. The ends do justify the means. And as you point out in your book, the title is so apt here because it's very, very important. Progressively worse. Why today's Democrats ain't your daddy's donkeys. Where are the the uh, the various moderate or even conservative Democrats? There's no S- Scoop Jackson. There's no Patrick Moynihan. There's nobody like that anymore, is there? No, I mean, I you you probably knew Tip O'Neill because you worked in the Reagan administration. But I, I at least admired the fact, and I bought this up in the bookmark, that O'Neill would meet with Reagan after hours, have a bourbon or a beer or whatever, two Irishmen, and, and they would sit down and be like, look, I know we have our differences, but, and they would work out some compromises for the good of the country. They, they didn't agree with each other on a lot of things, but there was civility, right? And, 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 and so I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 Tip O'Neill may, may have not have, like, been a very nice person, but I at least like the fact that he compromised. I was young at the time. But you look at John F. Kennedy, for example. This guy cut taxes in the middle of a recession. He mm-hmm. believed in a strong military. He stared down Khrushchev, didn't believe in racial quotas, believed in a merit-based system. And, oh, by the way, he was a war hero. Like, you know, that's somebody you can admire, and that's probably why he had a 70% approval rating. But now now you know what the media would do to John F. Kennedy. He's an extreme MAGA Republican for all of his positions on XYZ. Jimmy Carter was a pro-life president that was on the Democratic side. They're now extinct in the Democratic Party. You can you could find maybe one lawmaker who's pro-life as a Democrat at this point. And Bill Clinton, you know, for all of his personal faults, at least was street smart enough to work with Newt Gingrich and declare the era of big government's over, worked on welfare reform and passed that, had a balanced budget amendment. Imagine that. Wow, we don't spend what we don't have. And we have peace and prosperity. So all those days are gone now because we have a we have a party that's been taken over by the media, Mark. And I'll give I'll give one example around this. 2019, there's 26 Democrats running for the Democratic uh, nomination. And CNN says, you know, we're going to give each of you an hour, an hour on our air to do a town hall. And they're all like, great. That sounds great. Ah, But there's one catch. There's only one topic. Oh, what, the economy, immigration, foreign policy, education? No, no, it's the climate, and this is what they call it, the climate crisis. You can only talk about the climate and what you're going to do to stop climate change. (laughs) So if you're like the guy who ran from Montana, who is the governor there, who's a Democrat, and you want to talk about trade or energy, uh, or you want to talk about the economy, nope, you're not allowed. You have to talk about the climate crisis, because that is the only thing that CNN will allow. So I think the media... MSNBC, New York Times, you mentioned the Washington Post before, they've never endorsed a Republican presidential candidate in their history, which is quite remarkable to do. Uh, they've pushed this party in the direction that they're in now. Uh, and, and all these lawmakers on the left, they watch those channels, they read those papers, and they take their cues from them instead of the other way around.
You're so right, because it doesn't matter how many subscribers or viewers they have. Like the Morning Joe show, which nobody gives a damn about, which has a tiny audience. And yet uh, Joe Biden stares at that uh, monitor during the course of that show and they want to hear themselves talked up and so forth. So you're right that there is this huge disconnect between the Washington, D.C., New York, L.A. media and the rest of the country, which is why it was hilarious when Joe Stephanopoulos, Joe, George Stephanopoulos announced as soon as this guy Waltz was picked, you know, he's he's your he's your Midwestern values guy. Did this? He said, how the hell would you know, you little jerk? And by the way, didn't he head the war room for Clinton trying to smear all those women who accused Clinton of molesting them? Uh, bimbo eruptions, I believe uh, he pushed that narrative along with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. You know, the party of women, uh, it, the party of women, one ticket believes that we should keep men out of women's sports, right? That's the Republican side. The other believes we should keep tampons in boys' bathrooms. Yeah. Just, just mm-hmm. to make that clear exactly where we're at with that. And you remember 2016, everybody was so shocked when, when Donald Trump won. To your point, like George Stephanopoulos, how would you know that Tim Walls is that folksy Midwest guy that everybody can relate to? Well, in 2016, everybody was so shocked because, oh, I'm sorry, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania all went to Donald Trump, you know, supposed to be the blue wall, especially the last three states that I named. So then I, I went back and I looked. The Hill once did, were, were my, my old publication, which, which is centrist, uh, you know, maybe it leans on the left, who cares? At least we try, or we did try mm-hmm. when I was there. Um, they did an analysis, along with me, on mm-hmm. the major newspaper endorsements that happened before that election. 59 endorsements, okay, for major publications. 57 went to Hillary Clinton, and two went to Donald Trump. And that got Hillary Clinton a set of uh, steak knives and a concession speech. In other yeah. words, all those endorsements. This is how you should vote. And everybody ignored it because no one really trusts the messenger anymore. Folks, it's a great book. It's a great book. It's already on the New York Times bestseller list, I understand. Progressively worse, why today's Democrats ain't your daddy's donkeys. It is actually quite prescient. It's absolutely relevant to what's taking place. Go to Amazon.com. It's on all my social sites. You can go there and link right to it and get it. It'll be delivered tomorrow or the next day. Progressively worse. Why today's Democrats ain't your daddy's donkeys. And it's remarkable you were able to bring it up to modern times because I know at a minimum you need a three-month print period. And there you are. The book's relevant right up to current events. It's a great job, Joe. Oh, thank you. I mean, I got a little lucky, you know, with, with Joe Biden dropping out and then Kamala Harris, as we mentioned before. The party that's going to save democracy installed a candidate that didn't receive one vote. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's well timed. Uh, but but in the end, Mark, you know, Democrats are fully aware that they can easily and blatantly lie and get away with it because the media will only aid and abet them in that effort. And they know there's enough of the electorate not informed or gullible enough to believe them. And and that's that's my worry. Like, do you think that mm-hmm. people are so distracted by it, they're in their phones? They're, they're watching all these goofy videos like like my 10-year-old, but she's 10, which is fine. She could do that mm-hmm. once in a while. She's a straight-A student. But do you think there's enough of the electorate that isn't paying attention and will just actually believe Kamala Harris is the next Barack Obama or at least the next Betty O'Rourke? Yeah, I think there is, and that's our challenge. There's really two types that the Democrat media is aiming for. One, those, as Rush would call them, the low-information voters and the zealots. They want to get their zealots out. And that's what they're aiming for. But they also want to get these low information voters out. And the way you get them out is to lie like hell about yourself and your opponent. And that's what they're working on. Look, they figure the election's going to be decided by 20, 50, 100, 150,000 votes. And that's what they're focused on. And that's what the last couple of elections have come down to, right? Just in a couple mm-hmm. of spring states, 10,000 here, 12,000 there, 20,000 there. Yeah, that, that's what it comes down to. And it's an information war. And that's why I'm glad at least that Donald Trump appears to be going back on X on Twitter because you need as many platforms as possible. And he's, we saw that last night with Elon Musk. That was a smart move. He needs to continue to do that. And I think J.D. Vance, by the way, continue to get out there, do every interview in the book because you are infinitely smarter and, and much more uh, adept than any of these folks that are interviewing you. So, uh, yeah, I think as this, as this campaign yep. goes on, I think they wear down this Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, fantasy uh, that these people can actually govern. And, and it's not only up to can. them, as I tell the 14 and a half million people who come into their show every week, it's up to us. This is our country. Take the links. Take what you hear me say. Other people that you rely on say, share it. Go around this media. This media is only there because we allow them in our lives. They don't have to be in our lives. We have the ability to communicate directly with tens of millions of people. 
Joe Concha, the book is progressively worse. You can get it on Amazon.com. God bless you, my friend. Take care of yourself. Mark, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Let's do this again sometime. <laughs> You're a good man. We will. Take care of yourself. Well, he's good, isn't he, Mr. Producer? Really, really good. 